Let's explore how to build a bulletproof Notion workspace. And by bulletproof, I mean a workspace that's structured enough to keep information clean and manageable, but at the same time, it's flexible enough to evolve with new users, fresh content, and updates to Notion itself. Like an inviting website, it makes finding information easy, navigation is intuitive, and it's generally pleasant to use. So to achieve this, you're going to take a two-pronged approach. First, you'll centralize your information within master databases, and then you'll create gateways for accessing that information. And each of these two prongs will have a dedicated top-level page. Your master databases will live in a data page, and then you'll access that information from a home base. We're going to be working with an existing workspace that's pre-populated with a little bit of content for the fictitious company Loggerhead Labs. You'll be able to view and duplicate that workspace as you practice these concepts on your own. And there's also a post detailing each step on Notion VIP. You'll find both linked in the YouTube video description. This may be a lot to take in, but I promise once it clicks, you'll have a really good understanding of the Notion fundamentals in a powerful way to organize your workspaces. So let's jump into the first of our two prongs, centralizing your information within master databases. For guidance, we're going to reference the PARA method. And the PARA method is an organizational method developed by Tiago Forte. It segments information into four buckets, which I've described here in the context of Notion. The first bucket is projects, which are initiatives with defined outcomes and a deadline, and they're completed through a series of tasks. Examples include organizing an event, creating a website, and conducting an advertising campaign. Resources are materials for general reference or use for your projects. A multimedia library, educational material, and a contact list might all be resources. Areas are the high-level categories of your work in life. They offer a method of categorizing projects and resources. All projects and most resources will fall within an area. So examples here include finances and continuing education and marketing. And at work, your clients will often constitute areas as well. And then archives are just the inactive or the completed projects, resources, and areas. So you'll start by creating a top-level page. And within that page, you'll create four databases, one for each of the first three pair of buckets, and then another one for the tasks that make up your projects. So you can see here that we have an areas database, a projects database, a tasks database, and a resources database. And within the areas database, we have a select property to indicate the type of area. For Loggerhead Labs, we have two types of areas. We have one for internal operations and another for clients. And then the projects database also has a select property. This one's to indicate the status of the project. It also has a person property for the project manager and a date property with an end date for the time span. The tasks database also has a person property. This one's for the person responsible for completing the task. It has a date property as well without an end date for the task's deadline and then a checkbox property to mark the task completed. And then the resources database has a files and media property for attaching files. So a bulletproof workspace uses Notion's ability to link databases through relation properties. And we want to connect all of our master databases. So we'll start by connecting our areas database to our projects database. And we'll do that by adding a relation property and choosing the projects database. And then when we do that, we get a reciprocal relation property within the projects database for the area. And then we want to link projects to tasks. So within the projects database, we add another relation property and choose the tasks database. And that gives us the reciprocal relation property within the tasks database. And then lastly, we want to link our resources to areas. Remember, not all resources will fall within an area, but most will. So we add a relation property and choose the areas database. So it's interesting to note that when we link our projects and tasks databases, that gives us the ability to use formula 
and roll up properties to make some interesting calculations. You can see here that we've added a progress property which calculates progress based on the percentage of tasks that have been checked for each project. And then we've also ca calculated the days remaining for each project. So with your master databases structured and connected, you can add some initial content to work with. So populate just a few areas and then add at least one project that's associated with one of those existing areas. And when you do that, be sure to choose the area within the relation property. And then for that project, add some tasks associated with the project. And when you do, choose the project in the relation property. And then also add some resources that are associated with your existing areas and choose the area when you do so. The final step in centralizing your information is to populate the inner page content and create templates for areas and projects. So when you open an area, you want a snapshot of all the information associated with it. For this Blue Ribbon Restaurants area, we've included a table of contents, a brief overview, and then we've also included a board of projects. And this board of projects is a linked database and it's filtered to show only the projects associated with this particular area. And of course it's displayed as a board. And the projects within the board are grouped by their status. So we can see here that we have two sample projects. One's in progress, another one's complete. If we go back to our master projects database, we can see them here and see that, that they are the two associated with Blue Ribbon's restaurants. So going back into our Blue Ribbon Restaurants area, we have another linked database for the resources associated with this particular area. And of course it's filtered to show only the resources associated with Blue Ribbon Restaurants and this really displays best as a list. We also have a list of contacts and the contacts are a database that live within a resource. We'll be covering contact management in another video. So with this page populated, you can copy and paste its contents to a template for the area's database, which makes it easy to replicate. You can see here that we have our Loggerhead Labs area template. So you'll follow a similar procedure for your projects. When you open a project, you want a comprehensive view of all the information associated with the project. So that may include a list of project documents and a task timeline. So these project documents can be either linked to page blocks that link directly to a resource, or they can be new pages that you create directly within the project. And then the task timeline is another linked database. It's displayed in a list format and it's filtered to show only the tasks associated with this particular project. So as we did with the area, we can copy and paste this content into a template that makes it easy to duplicate. Here we can see the Loggerhead Labs project template. So we've centralized our information in master databases which live in a top level data page. That data page is easily accessible from the sidebar and then within it we can easily access each of our master databases which fold up nicely into the master data page. We're just about ready to move on to the second of our two pronged approach but first I want to quickly review the three ways you can input resources into the resources database. The first is a page where you can pose the resource directly within the database page. And an example of this would be your company's mission and vision. 
And then the second is an inner database where you create a database within the resource page. That's what we did with that contact list that you saw. And then lastly, you can attach a file to the files and media property of the resources database. Now you're ready to move on to the second part of our two-pronged approach, and that's creating access to the information that you just centralized. And that starts with your second top-level page, your home base. This is where you and your collaborators will typically interact with the information that you stored in your master databases. And as you think through the content for your home base, you might want to start with just a simple bullet list of items. Those items will generally be areas and resources, while projects and tasks are typically accessed within those areas and resources. For Loggerhead Labs, the clients are areas, and then the contact list and resources documents are resources. And as you add your items, you can group them into categories that will eventually become the headings of your columns. And once you have a good first version of your list, you can add any outstanding items to your master databases. And then you're ready to convert them into interactive elements within your home base. So create those headings and arrange them into columns. And then add the links. Each of those links will be one of two types. You can use a link to page block to link directly to an area or a resource. That's what we've done with our clients as well as our resources documents. So if you open the Blue Ribbon Restaurants client, remember that's an area and you can see all of the content that we nicely populated. And then each of the contact lists is a new page containing a unique view of a master contacts database, which is stored in the master resources database. So if you open the staff directory, for example, this is a linked database that's filtered to show only members of the loggerhead staff, and it displays them in a gallery format. And then sales leads show only sales leads, and it shows them within a board format and the leads are grouped by where they stand in the sales pipeline. And then the clients and vendors are just conventional tables. The Loggerhead home base also includes another linked database for the staff newsletter. It includes the most recent post and displays them in a nice gallery format. And there you have it, the foundation for a bulletproof Notion workspace where information is centralized within master databases and access from a welcoming home base. As you practice these strategies, be sure to reference the Loggerhead workspace in the post on Notion VIP. And if you hit a roadblock, send any questions my way through the YouTube comments or on Twitter at William Nutt.